What is up, guys? Chris the Casual. Um, it is Bible Week this time. Are you excited? I am excited to be moving on to the Bible. We're going to be reading just from the Bible uh, till Wednesday, and then it's back to the Book of Mormon for a week. But uh, day four of no coffee and tea. And to be honest, I kind of feel good. <laughs> I feel good. Uh, a lot better than I than I was when I first uh, stepped off for three days. Now I feel like energized without it, but I did on the walk home from work try zero sugar Pepsi. Not a fan. This is disgusting. I tried diet Pepsi first and then I thought I would give zero sugar a try and it's gross. It's just gross. Both are gross. Um, but um, I'm excited to go to the LDS church tomorrow and meet the new missionaries in my area. So that's good. The the ward there is really good. We have we have a great ward. The people in it are so nice. Um, but, yeah, Bible week. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? And the question of the day. Uh, do you guys drink coffee or tea? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Um, so, moving on to chapter 11 in Matthew out of the Holy Bible this time. That is where I left off at a week ago. So John the Baptist sends messengers to Jesus. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding. Oh, also, I've been watching a, a good amount of David Alexander. I don't know if you guys know about his channel or not, but he's a convert to the LDS church. And man, that guy, the way he speaks, his excitement and everything, like just that guy's awesome. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to point put that out there. Uh, John Baptist sends uh, messengers to Jesus. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are kings, houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of the John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent take it by force, for all the prophets and the law emphasized, emphasized until John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace, calling to their companions, and saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a wine bibber a friend to tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. Woe to the imp impenitent cities. Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Cherizen, woe to you, Bethsaida, for it mighty for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, 
who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more to you, more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Um, Jesus gives true rest. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And to one to whom the Son wills to reveal him, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus gives true rest. Matthew chapter 11 Verse 25 through 30, art, art right there. That is great. All right, so now we're moving on to chapter 12 of Matthew. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. At the same time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heeds of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, oh boy, the Pharisees, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate, the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath, and are blameless. Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had not known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the, gen the, guilty the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath, healing on the Sabbath. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogues, oh boy, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you, who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold on it, and lift it out? Of how much more value than is a man, than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath, then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and it was restored as a whole, as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him, how they might destroy him. So the Pharisees uh, did not like Jesus' healing on the Sabbath, especially in the synagogues. Oh boy, I knew that made them angry. You could, you could just imagine how mad they were, because the Pharisees like to do everything for show. Behold my servant. Um, behold my servant. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he. Warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon them, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. A house divided cannot stand. Then one was brought to him, who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed, and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, 
the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Oh, I definitely stand with Jesus. Uh, the unpardonable sin. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit, oh yeah, will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. So anyone that speaks against Jesus Christ will be forgiven because he died for all of our sins. That's what I'm taking from this. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. So anyone that speaks against, like blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, that is what will not be forgiven. And sadly, I have done that many times, and I hope mine will be forgiven. Because I used to mock God. I used to mock the Holy Spirit. I used to mock Jesus. And now I do not. So hopefully I will be forgiven for my sins because I have repented for those things either in this age or in the age to come. A tree known by its fruits. Either make the tree good or its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit, brood of vipers. Who oh, called the Pharisees brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be the you will be justified, and by your words you will become condemned. You will be condemned. Whoa. The scribes and Pharisees ask for a sign. And then some of the tribes, scribes, and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented and at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the word wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater than Solomon is here an unclean spirit returns when an unclean spirit goes out of man he goes through dry places seeking rest, and finds no one, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes him, seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Jesus, mother and brothers, send for him. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside, seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? He stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So he says that anyone that does the will of his father in heaven is his brother, his sister, and his mother. And we'll end it at that because that is the end 
of chapter 12 of Matthew. That is the first video of Book of Mormon week. Uh, did you guys enjoy? I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did reading. And uh, I'm about to go finish the David Alexander video that I was watching um, right after I end the video here. So uh, yeah, um, I look forward to visiting the LDS church tomorrow. Look forward to taking the sacrament and meeting with the new missionaries. And uh, I hope you guys are going to enjoy your church service as well uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, yeah, but that is it for this reading video. I do hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys in the next one. See ya.